Well, for one, there was this time where I underestimated the complexity of moving from a free, managed WordPress instance to a fully self-hosted one, without any knowledge of backend infrastructure or performance requirements, and naturally brought down the whole site multiple times. But despite being a big one, there are more critical overarching mistakes that I've made that have really shaped my career. If you're new here, my name is Juan Carlos and I'm a software engineer on a journey to share what I've learned about this lifestyle. Today, that is sharing some of my top mistakes. So let's dive into the first one. During my time at City Mix, I was promoted to tech lead and eventually led two different teams and projects. This is one surefire way to learn that your coding abilities are not everything as you move up the software engineering ladder. I realized that without well-developed soft skills, even the most technically brilliant engineer will struggle to work efficiently with their team or fully understand a user's needs. I came across a study done by Google on their own teams and they discovered that the most successful ones were the ones where the team members had high emotional intelligence and effective communication skills. It quickly became clear that this was an area I needed to develop further. Over time, and even when I'm not a tech lead now, I've come to understand that focusing on improving soft skills and building on the work of others can have a huge impact on my own effectiveness as an individual engineer. Another study done by Harvard Business School found that technical skills only accounted for 15% of a person's success in a job, while soft skills made up the remaining 85%. So how do you go about developing these? Well, one of my favorite ways is to start paying attention to people you think do this really well. During my time at Microsoft, I was fortunate enough to find really talented people that I could learn from. Understanding their underlying concerns, motivations, and collaboration skills helped me a lot to grow in the departments of effective and empathic communication. I know this one's sort of cliche advice at this point, but it's also for that reason that it's so easy to dismiss. Of course, I know soft skills are important, but we rarely take the time to proactively hone them and, unfortunately, people start paying attention to this as soon as it starts becoming an issue. So there's an opportunity there to get ahead. As software engineers, we often strive for perfectionism in our work. We want to create the most elegant and optimized solutions for our projects, but this mindset can actually slow progress down and waste time in many cases. I remember a project in Citionomics where I was so focused on creating an elaborate architecture for the main accounts dashboard that obviously ended up taking longer than it should have because I was having fun creating the solution and I unconsciously refused to see how maybe a simpler approach would have sufficed. Being mindful of this and catching yourself when you fall into that mindset has been game changer for me. There are notable examples of over-engineering causing issues in real-world situations. I remember making this connection when I was reading about the story of the Concorde jet. This was a marvel of engineering, capable of supersonic flight, and turned out to be a disaster, at least commercially. Its design was so technologically advanced and intrinsically complex that it resulted in sky-high operation and maintenance costs. The tickets had to be priced at insane numbers just to cover these costs effectively rendering it unaffordable for the vast majority of travelers. Instead of always trying to craft the most elaborate solution, focus on finding the most efficient path to achieve your end goal first. It's likely you'll find that it's good enough and only add complexity when it's truly demanded by either other technical or business complexities. During my first Microsoft internship, I was really close to not getting a return offer because I wasn't being aggressive enough. What my manager essentially meant was that I wasn't being proactive enough in unblocking myself and making progress on the project. This feedback, of course, hurt at the time, but it ultimately made me realize the importance of taking charge of my own career rather than waiting for things to happen. I usually relate this to the awe of the institution syndrome that I felt towards Microsoft and how I would think that if some of the things blocking me were not moving forward, there were probably good reasons behind it. This mindset really kept me from finding ways to unblock myself and deliver progress more consistently. And I've now learned that it's not just about tackling problems as they come up, it's about anticipating them and finding mitigations before they even become an issue. What I like about this is that when you internalize it, you can start applying it outside of the mundane operational blockers you have and adopt a more proactive approach to your whole career and even your whole life. 
feeling blocked should encourage action, not the opposite. So whenever you feel stuck, remember that there are likely a lot of other ways to approach the problem that you just haven't identified yet. A great moment to plug this line from one of my favorite shows. What are your choices if someone puts a gun to your head? What are you talking about? You do what they say or they shoot you. Wrong. You take the gun. We pull out a bigger one. Truth be told, when I started coding, I was a lot more keen on getting things done than really understanding how they worked. Before my interviews with Microsoft, I recall spending countless hours practicing coding problems from cracking the coding interview, and at the beginning, I would put heavy emphasis on just getting solutions right, rather than comprehending the underlying principles. It was like trying to build a house starting with the walls and roof instead of laying a strong foundation. I thankfully realized at some point that understanding fundamental principles is kind of essential for solving complex problems efficiently. This has saved me so much time whenever a nagging issue arises that would be hard to identify on a surface level. If you've ever had to deal with auto layout on iOS, you know what I mean. One of the ways I dealt with this, for example, was taking the time to revisit how computers work at a circuitry level. I've of course forgotten most of it, but the principles of how computers were designed stuck with me. and. It's a lot easier to debug lower level problems in code with this understanding. That's also why it's easier to learn your second language. Because once you internalize the fundamentals with the first one, a lot of that stuff carries over to the second. And having that adaptability is really valued in this industry. Learning from our mistakes is an important part of growth and development. And as software engineers, we can all benefit from gaining insight into the experiences of others. In that same spirit of learning from past experiences, I also recently published a video about the things I wish I knew before becoming a software engineer. So if you're on that path, I recommend you go watch that next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.